Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm broadcasting to you live from beautiful Budapest, Hungary, Central Europe. Hope everybody's doing great. Hi, Nair. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Venkata Prasad. Good to see students joining in on time. All right, so today we are looking at some IELTS reading general uh, module. We're going to look at some strategies, skills, and practice for that maximum band nine score. Of course, as usual, our materials are coming from our website, so check us out at gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. And if you are studying for academic IELTS, visit us at aehelp.com. And you can also check out our Academic IELTS YouTube channel, which is called Academic English Help. So definitely have a look at that. We do live sessions there also. You can get uh, our books from Amazon, our six original practice exams for the IELTS. Look for GE Helps General IELTS and look for AE Helps Academic IELTS on Amazon. If you have questions about the IELTS or about our products, students, then uh, feel free to send me an email. Adrian at G-I-E-L-T-S H-E-L-P dot com. That's my name at G-I-E-L-T-S-H-E-L-P dot com. Hi, Rekha. Good to see you in this class. One of our members from our Academic English Help channel. All right. Uh, so today, again, we're looking at general reading strategies. We have these live classes Wednesday to Saturday from 1330 to 1430 Central European time. Tomorrow, we're looking at a task to writing question. All right, let's take a peek at today's reading passage. Here we go. So, students, uh, hi, Pachu. Uh, take a look here. This is uh, from section two of general IELTS reading. Uh, general IELTS, you have three sections in the reading and you have five passages all together, okay? Section one has two short passages, section two has two short passages, and section three has one long passage, so keep that in mind. Um, this one here, it's the East Bradford Township Council Minutes. Uh, does everybody know what minutes means other than time. So besides the definition of time, there's another definition for the word minutes. If you're a businessman, you might be familiar with this. Anybody know what minutes means, as in this case? So you see here the titles East Bradford Township Council Minutes. Yeah, that's right, Pachu. Yeah, minutes of a meeting. What is that? What is that? What is the meeting minutes? What does that actually mean? Let me give you that vocabulary. It's good to know. Okay. So just a little bit of vocab here for you. Uh, minutes can also mean business uh, or meeting notes. Okay. So the word here is notes. So if you have a meeting with your business partners or if you have a meeting uh, with your school uh, fellow students, your peers, uh, you end up with the minutes. The minutes, it's a record of the uh, notes or a record of what happened during the meeting. A written, uh, written short form record of a meeting. Okay, that's what minutes are. And your general IELTS reading section uh, for section one and section two can be a brochure, uh, it can be an information pamphlet, and it can be like this, uh, minutes from a meeting. So record of a meeting that you have to understand. All right, um, so let's do some reading practice here with just some fluency. Uh, we'll jump over to our websites. 
So this is our general IELTS website here. You can join our full course when you click that big red button. And then you have access to your My Student account at the top where you can find your interactive exams, your interactive course, over 100 hours of videos, and lots and lots of audio, including audio for all of the reading sections. So in this reading section, it's CD5 because it's exam five and it's track number six. You can see that here. So CD5 track six. So if you have our books, if you have access to our website, it's good to use that audio. Uh, I'm just going to play this and I want you to read and listen. Okay, so listen and read. Uh, I have everything maximum on my end. So volume, everything is max on my side. So if it's quiet, Use a headset and uh, turn up the volume. Hi, Kareem. Thank you for all those lovely hearts. Okay, here we go. So just read and listen. That's all you need to do. Try to, of course, understand as much as possible. Okay. East Bradford Township Council Minutes, February 10th, 2017. Members present, Mayor Joanne Whiteley, Councillor David Bishop, Councillor David Hughes, Councillor Margaret McNeil, Councillor Crispin Rutherford, taking the minutes. The first order of business was brought forward by Mayor Whiteley. She suggested lowering the speed limits on township roads outside the inner core from 50 miles per hour to 40. The reasons she provided for the motion were deemed insufficient for adoption, and the motion was defeated four to one. Second, the council discussed the proposal that would raise the salary of township councillors by 3% per annum indefinitely. While this was seen as clearly in the interest of all involved, Councillor Bishop and Mayor Whiteley cited the optics of the measure in voting against it. Councillor McNeil abstained and the vote was defeated in a 2-2 tie. Mayor Whiteley's vote being the deciding vote in the case of a tie. Councillor McNeil suggested that we instead make the increase 2.5%. Another vote was held and the measure passed by a 3-2 margin. Third, I, Councillor Rutherford, brought forward a suggestion for winding pavements along the Oak Street promenade. That part of the township is used by many older people and the overly narrow pavement is a safety issue for the OAPs and their mobility devices, scooters, walkers, etc. We did not vote on this suggestion, but we did agree to look into this issue more. I am to give a report next month after talking with some constituents and stakeholders over the next month. Fourth. Plans were discussed for the annual East Bradford Spring Carnival happening in mid-March. The Mayor suggested a budget increase to allow for a higher budget for fireworks, but the measure was defeated in a 3-1 vote, Councillor Bishop abstaining. Finally, Councillor Bishop brought forward a motion to increase the Township's police budget by 10% for the upcoming fiscal year. He cited growing crime rates, especially among minors, Mayor Whiteley countered by suggesting better outreach programs in our primary and secondary schools. A vote was not held, but Councillor Hughes was tasked with producing a report on outreach programs in other similar townships and municipalities across the country. Manchester City University. All right, so that might seem a little bit tricky at the beginning, but it's not that bad, and I'll show you what I mean, okay? So, uh, typical uh, minutes there for a council meeting. Uh, now, of course, uh, the best next step when you're improving your comprehension is to answer some questions about this, okay? So, uh, what is this passage about? What is this passage about? Hi, Afsana. What is this passage about? Okay, let's uh, do a little bit of comprehension work. Let's see how much you understood from this, okay? So give me your answers. What did we just read? 
you can give me general ideas or you can give me specific ideas. Try to express as much as you can about what you understood from reading, all right? You don't want to just skim and scan, especially if you need a high band score like a band 7 for an express visa, okay? So you need to make sure that you understand uh, as much as possible. Okay, Pachu says uh, it's maybe about crime control. Okay, more generally, what is it about? Let's go back to the passage. Okay, we're talking about the East Bradford Township Council minutes. Who is present? So these are the people at the meeting. Okay, so we know the council minutes. This is a meeting. Okay, it's Mayor Joanne Whitley, Councillor David Bishop, Councillor David Hughes, Councillor Margaret McNeil, and Councillor Crispin Rutherford, who's taking these minutes. All right, that's who is meeting. Right? What are they talking about? What are they discussing in their minutes? What is in this passage? Okay. When town councillors get together, what do they talk about? Keep it simple. Okay, that's fine. Ishmael, Gavin Deep, your week in reading. Let's get into the lesson, answer some questions, and let's make you strong in reading. That's the goal here. How do you get strong? by improving your reading comprehension. That means active reading. That means reading text and answering questions about what you just read, thinking critically. Well, let's ask this question. What is the purpose of a town council meeting? Why do councillors meet? Rekha says traffic. Okay, Pachu says to township development. Good. Yeah, absolutely. So the purpose of a town council meeting is to solve problems in the city or in the town and to develop the town by making it better, right? Okay, so now I think Pachu says, well, one way that we can do that is by decreasing crime, right? So lowering crime rates is one way, all right? Providing better facilities, Rekha says. Yeah, so how do we make it better? Provide better facilities, lower crime. What else can we improve? Welfare of society, okay. Sure, improve traffic, right, roads. Sure, so that's what town councillors talk about, all right? That's what you need to think about when you read this passage. All right. Now, how does that happen? So how do changes happen in the government office. So how do the, we decide uh, to build a new road or not build a new road or build a new park or not build a new park? So how do they decide that? Okay, so how are decisions made in a city hall or a government office? So how do you make a decision? What happens? So you have a couple people. They say, hey, guys, girls, we should build a new road. Okay, very good. Saurabh Bundel says, by voting. Okay. Okay, and you can vote yes, no, or you can abstain from voting, which means not give a vote. All right, so that's what we can do. Great, fantastic. So keep in mind, asking the right questions when you're practicing your reading 
before you sit the IELTS is very important to master the IELTS reading passage and get higher IELTS band scores. All right. So keep this strategy in mind that you have to read and ask questions. This strategy, of course, is called active reading. Okay. So this is strategy and practice before IELTS. Okay, so read the passage. And ask questions. Okay, so what is the passage about? What is the purpose of a town council meeting? It's to solve problems in the town, to develop the town, to make it better. How? Provide better facilities, lower crime, welfare, improve traffic. How are the decisions made in city hall or government office? By voting, yes, no, or abstain from voting. If you see some new words like abstain, abstain means withdraw or step back from your vote, uh, write those down, okay? Learn the vocabulary. All right, so again, this could easily be one of your IELTS passages. It's about the East Bradford Township Council meeting notes. It tells you who is present. Let's have a look at the questions. This is one of the questions many students are kind of scared of or don't like very much. It's matching people. And when you're matching people, this is a typical type of passage. Okay. So here it says, look at the five people A to E below. Mayor Joanne Whitley, Councillor David Bishop, Councillor David Hughes. Notice how it's just the family name or the surname that's different there. Okay, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, Councillor Margaret McNeil and Councillor Crispin Rutherford. Now I know that names in another language are especially tricky because you're not used to hearing them. Okay, so you have to be especially careful. So here the question is, which uh, person, okay, for which person are the following statements true? So you have to match the statement with the person, okay? Note, by the way, you can use any letter more than once, okay? Should I read this question before the passage? So is it a good idea to read this kind of qu question before I read the passage? Is that a good idea? So let's learn a little bit of strategy here for this type of question. Okay. So reading, matching people with statements question. Okay, uh, so Rekha says no, Farheen says yes, you should. And I agree with Farheen, you should read it before the passage. This is very important to read before the passage and be clear about it, okay? Otherwise, it will be very difficult to solve this uh, question. Is skimming and scanning effective for this type of question? It's my next one for you. Is it good to try to search for this information? Okay, so number one, read this type of question carefully before the passage. Pay attention to the information. Okay, paraphrase. All right. Uh, so Pachu says, yes, you can. You can scan for people's names, um, but that could be very, very slow, okay? So pay attention, careful, or attention. Searching, scanning, 
can be very slow for this type of question. You can search for people's names, but only do this if you have to. Okay. All right. Instead, you have to pay attention to the action of the people, okay? So pay attention to actions of the people, okay? And uh, I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So I'll show you all three of these important uh, tips and strategies for matching people's names and how that works. All right. Uh, the reason why scanning or searching can be very, very slow is because for this type of question, it's not necessarily in the same order as the passage. So you might have to read the whole passage to get to the first answer, like in this situation, okay? Because you may need to scan the whole passage for an answer. Okay, keep that in mind. Let's go back uh, right now and take a look at this. So, first one, suggested a broadening of a pavement. Okay, what's another way to say that? What's another way to say this sentence? Suggested a broadening of payment. Okay. That's right, but you sometimes the names are not clearly used because they use a pronoun like he or she. So Rekha says, widen the road. Yeah. Or if it's not the road, then widen what? If we're not widening the road, then what are we widening? The... Road is for cars, people use what? What do people's, people use? Cars use roads, people use what goes beside the road. It's called a one word. Hopefully some of you are thinking of it. Uh, usually not, sometimes we call it a footpath, uh, Saurabh, but more commonly we call it a sidewalk. Okay, it's beside the road, right? So it's a sidewalk. Very good, Maria Fay. So widening the road or widening the sidewalk suggested broadening the pavement, okay? So take a look at this. Um, if I'm searching the passage, okay? So here there's no name. So I have to look for that information in the whole text. And if I'm just searching trying to match it up, if I'm skimming and scanning, that qu first question will take a lot of time because if we look here, third, I, Councillor Rutherford, brought forward a suggestion for widening pavements along the Oak Street Promenade. That part of the township is used by many older people. So here is the word widening, here is the word pavements, okay? So we know that the person is I, the one taking the minutes, Councillor Rutherford, right? So the correct answer for the first one is Councillor Rutherford. Councillor Rutherford is E. So for question number nine in your answer sheet, you have to put E, okay, for the correct answer. Now, if you're just searching, skimming, and scanning, it will be really frustrating because you just scanned almost the whole passage to get that first answer. If you have to do that for every one of these questions, it will be very, very difficult. So a better way is read the passage, Pay attention to the information, pay attention to the action of the people, and connect the people with the actions.
okay? Here we go, students. Let's read it one more time, and let's pay attention to the actions, all right? So from the top, let's read it together, and then we'll answer all of these questions. Let's see how many questions we can get without searching the text. First, read with me. East Bradford Township Council Minutes, February 10, 2017. Members present, Mayor Joanne Whitley, Councillor David Bishop, Councillor David Hughes, Councillor Margaret McNeil, and Councillor Crispin Rutherford taking the minutes. The first order of business, so I know I have this uh, uh, question with people, so I'm paying special attention to the people, okay? So the first order of business was brought forward by Mayor Whitney. She, Mayor Whitley is the boss. She suggested lowering the speed limits on the township roads outside the inner core from 50 miles an hour to 40, okay? So here I'm making the connection between the mayor, the boss, and speed limit. Okay, so remember, I read the question before I read the passage, so I'm paying special attention to the name and what they're doing, okay? The mayor is speeding in the car, okay, wants to lower the speed limits, all right? The reason she provided for the motion were deemed insufficient for adoption, and the motion was defeated, okay? It means it wasn't passed, four to one. Second... The council discussed the proposal that would raise the salary of township councillors by 3% per annum indefinitely. While this was seen as clearly in the interest of all involved, Councillor Bishop and Mayor Whiteley cited the optics of the measure in voting against it. So Bishop and the mayor, so these two, did not like this 3% annual increase, okay? Voted against it. Councillor McNeil abstained, so this one did not vote, and the vote was defeated in a two, or the vote was defeated in a 2-2 two -two tie, Mayor Whiteley's vote being the deciding vote in the case of a tie. Councillor McNeil suggested that we instead make the uh, increase 2.5, so McNeil is suggesting an increase of 2.5. Pay attention again to the actions. Another vote was held and the measure passed by three to two margin. Third, I, Councillor Rutherford, brought forward a suggestion for the widening of pavements along the Oak Street Promenade. That part of the township is used by many older people and the overly narrow pavement is a safety issue for OAPs and their mobility devices, scooters, walkers, etc. We did not vote on this suggestion, but we did agree to look into this issue more. I am to give a report next month after talking with some constituents and stakeholders over the month. Fourth, plans were discussed for the annual East Bradford Spring Carnival happening in mid-March. The mayor, again, it's the mayor. Notice how the mayor comes up in three different places suggested a budget increase to allow for higher budget for fireworks, but the measure was defeated in a 3-1 vote. Councillor Bishop abstaining. Okay, so the mayor suggested more money so there can be more fireworks. Try to visualize that. So try to see that in your mind, that this is a mayor and the mayor wants fireworks. Okay, so... See that in your mind's eye. All right. Let's keep going. We're almost at the end here. Okay, so uh, finally, uh, Councillor Bishop brought forward a motion to increase the township's police budget by 10%. So Bishop increased police budget by 10%. For the upcoming fiscal year, he cited growing crime rates, especially among minors. Mayor Whiteley countered by suggesting better outreach programs. So Whiteley says we need better programs. Bishop says 
that we need more police, okay? A vote was not held, but Councillor Hughes was tasked with producing a report on outreach programs in other similar townships and municipalities across the country. Okay, so again, visualize that. All right. Let's see what we can do now. So, first one, suggested a broadening of pavement. We know that that's E. We already solved it. Okay. The next one, did not bring forward a motion that was voted on. Okay. So, this is a person who did not suggest any kind of motion. Who was that? So, who did not suggest any kind of change? Was it the mayor? Was it Councillor David Bishop, David Hughes, or Margaret McNeil, or uh, Councillor Crispin Rutherford? Which one of these councillors did not make a suggestion? Well, we know the mayor did. The mayor brought forward a couple of suggestions. Councillor Bishop, we just talked about, wanted the police uh, presence to be uh, changed. Councillor Crispin Rutherford, that's taking the minutes, wants the widening of the pavements. So it has to be C or D. Okay. So Rekha and Nair says, I think it's C. All right. Uh, it could be D as well. So now if I have to search, because I understand the text, I know it has to be either Hugh or McNeil. Okay, so if I'm looking for Hugh or McNeil, do I find it? It's a 50-50 guess at this point. Okay, uh, let's see. I think McNeil did say something in the beginning. Okay, have a look here. Councillor McNeil suggested that we instead make the increase 2.5%. Another vote was held. So it looks like McNeil did bring something forward. And I remembered correctly that it was Hughes that is not tasked with anything. So uh, good for the students who chose C. Yeah, Councillor Hughes, okay? So McNeil wanted that change in the increase. So C is correct. All right. Uh, suggested outreach programs may be uh, preferable to a budget increase. All right. Who suggested that creating programs uh, might be better than changing the police budget? Number 11. And this is where, again, you have to really pay attention to the actions, okay? Who suggested the outreach program? Was it A, the mayor, or B, David Bishop, David Hughes, uh, D, Margaret McNeil, or E, Crispin Rutherford? Who said, hey, we should do the outreach programs? Nair says A, maybe D. Uh, the answer is A. Okay, the answer is Mayor Joanne Whiteley. And again, if you're searching for this, you'd have to search almost the full uh, text because it's the very last paragraph. Notice here, uh, we have finally, Councillor Bishop brought forward a motion to increase the township's police budget by 10% for the upcoming fiscal year. He cited growing crime rates especially among minors. Mayor Whiteley countered by suggesting better outreach programs. So it's right at the end. Now, the mayor makes a few suggestions. She's the boss. She's got a lot going on, right? So one suggestion she makes is to decrease speed limits. Another one is to um, spend uh, efforts on these outreach programs. What was the third action of the mayor? What was the third action of the mayor? 
And again, you should connect these like a mind map in your brain, okay? So here, again, the answer is clearly A. Okay, what was the third? So speed limit, outreach programs. What was the third action of the mayor? How many of you caught that? Okay, uh, abstained on a vote about increasing the salary of counselors. So here, if I have to search, I should search for the information, not the name. Uh, where in the reading is the... Uh, increase salary of counselors. Where do I find salary? That's right, Sarab. Very good, Sarab. Yeah, for my previous question regarding the mayor, the third action the mayor wanted was uh, spending more money on fireworks. Good for you, Sarab. Thank you for answering that question. All right, so here I'm not searching for the name. I'm searching for the information increase salary of counselors, and I'm searching for the person who decided not to vote, so abstain to vote, okay? That piece of information was here. Second, the council discussed the proposal that would raise the salary of the township, okay? Um, and then here we go. Councillor McNeil abstained and the vote was defeated in a 2-2 tie. So Councillor McNeil abstained. So the answer is D, right? Now, what you need to pay attention to, and maybe you realize this, that's an important strategy for... Uh, this type of matching people to information is you have to keep a sequence of information in the passage, okay? That's a very important tip for this type of question. So keep a sequence of actions uh, in the reading when you have to match people to information. And what I mean by that, so here's the example, okay, of that sequence. So paragraph one is speed limit. Paragraph two is about pay raise. Paragraph three is about, and so this is where you want to keep this sequence. So notice here, the first order of business to lower speed limit. So we know that that's speed limit. Second, the council discussed raising the salary. Okay. Third, Suggested widening of pavements. Fourth, fireworks. Fifth, police or community programs. So paragraph four. Fireworks, paragraph five, crime, police, community, programs, right? So as long as you have this sequence in mind when you read, so you know the sequence of actions, then it's much easier to figure out where you need to look for that information. Okay, so that's a very, very useful strategy for matching people. Okay, so here our next question 
is advocated for a higher fireworks budget. So we know that's near the end of the uh, reading. It's the second to last paragraph. And we also know that it is the second uh, motion or the second action of which uh, person. So who suggested uh, spending more money on fireworks? Yeah, the mayor. Absolutely. The mayor did. And the mayor is A. So again, we have answer A here, right? Uh, of course, the mayor, right? If uh, there's some big fireworks, uh, then the people are happy and everybody's giving praise to usually the mayor. So uh, why not if it makes sense to be suggested? Um, okay, and then number 14, in charge of researching outreach programs. Now, if I have to search, I know that the outreach programs are the last part of what I read because I kept this sequence, right, in my mind. And we know that it's one of the counselors. So here we go. Okay. And a vote was not held, but Counselor Hughes was tasked with producing a report. So producing a report means to research because you have to do research to produce a report. So who's the person in charge of that? Who's the person in charge of that? It is Councillor Hughes. So Councillor David Hughes is C. So here we go, we're going to answer C. So our answers are E, C, A, D, A, and C, okay? Looks like we didn't use the answer B. All right. Any more questions with that? No, it is the next reading. So here we go, students. Let's do a reading together. We'll do this one again using the audio from the website. This is a Manchester City University pamphlet, brochure, information brochure. So uh, students who are planning to study abroad, you might have already read this kind of a pamphlet if you're researching universities. Okay, so here it's Manchester City University. Here we go, students. Let's read, and then I'll show you the questions after, okay? So for right now, just let's do a little bit more reading practice. Here we go. So going back to our website here and uh, going to CD number five, track number seven. Manchester City University. Welcome to our open day at Manchester City University. Your next three years at MCU will be filled with hard work, the rewards that come from learning, and a whole lot of fun. While we are thrilled you are here visiting, there is only so much we can show you in the few hours on campus. To supplement your visit, we have created this brochure that outlines many more of the great features and benefits of studying with us at MCU. First, let's look at some stats. MCU students, 3,900. MCU staff, 210. Student to staff ratio, approximately 19 to one. The best ratio of any English university. Placement rate, 78%. Student satisfaction, 96%. As you can see, we have a lot to offer here. Our university is small, but that means our students get the attention they need to succeed at university and in life. Here are a few of the wonderful programs and services we offer here at MCU. One, Student Learning and Tutoring Center. Open to all students free of charge, our learning center will give you extra help 
in whatever subject is giving you trouble, from calculus to English, philosophy to anthropology, and everything in between. We have you covered. We also feature a dedicated team of tutors for our English as a Second Language students. 2. Student Counselling Office We take the mental health of our students and staff very seriously, and we encourage students to talk openly and honestly about their mental health. Counsellors are available seven days a week. 3. Work Placement Programmes These programmes, available in many of our degree programmes, place students in a workplace situation in their field of study for a semester in their third year of study. This gives students incredible real-world experience and contacts in the field in which they want to pursue a career. 4. Work and Study Grants For students in their second and third years, MCU offers a limited number of work and study grants in which students are given placements within the university, assisting professors in research. These grants are given based on demonstrated ability as well as financial need. All right, students, so that is another typical general IELTS reading passage. And for this one, you have some fill-in-the-blank questions, which I will show you now. Uh, and for this one, uh, the goal is for you to do this for homework. So write no more than two words and or a number. Uh, there you have all of the questions, 15 to 21. Uh, you can send your answers to me by email. I will post the answer key or I will email you the answer key. Again, you can read this passage later uh, when uh, the video is available on our channel, so you can go back and uh, watch uh, the video again. Uh, remember, this is at the 45-minute mark, so read the passage one more time. Uh, answer the questions, send it to me by email, and I will gladly give you the answer key uh, so you know how you did. All right, students, tomorrow we will be doing a task two writing question example for the general IELTS. Until then, definitely check us out on our websites. So do visit us at gieltshelp.com, which is this website here. You'll notice the home page has this beautiful green uh, background. And uh, all you have to do is click that big red button to join. You can also try it free if you click that green button, but I'm sure you'll like it. So use it, improve your band score. If you're studying for academic IELTS, go to this website, blue background, click that big red button and join us there. All right, students, that's it for general IELTS for today. If you want to join the academic uh, IELTS lesson, it will be listening, which is the same for the general IELTS. So it's useful regardless of what student you are. Uh, that lesson will start in about 30 minutes at 15 o'clock Central European time. It's been my pleasure to teach you today. Again, make sure to visit our websites. Have an awesome rest of your day. Keep up the good studies. The sweet fruits of your hard labor, labor will be yours. Bye for now.